Hey, so what's going on? So as you can see right here, we're starting off with Liv Morgan. Now, usually how I like to start off, um, I always like to start off with the outline. Once I get with the outline, right now I'm using the light charcoal pencil. So I'm just looking at the reference that I'm looking at and I'm just touching up on all of the dark spots and all the dark areas. Now, as you can see right here, it's always important to have your pencil sharpened. Um, even though um, how I'm doing my shading in right now, I'm always going in with a circle and formation but I have the pencil um, almost at a, the tip of it is very, um, very, very, very sharpened. What I like to use is a sandpaper. Now you can't see, but um, I'm working in the bottom of um, this um, 18 by 24 size watercolor paper. Now, one thing I did forgot to mention. Now, I'm going back and forth with the charcoal soft pencil and the blending stomp, as you can see right here. Now, this blending stomp comes in many different sizes. So to me, um, I'm always going back and forth with the big, medium, and the small, depending on what area that I'm going through. Now, I do like to use my brush, but the blending stomp, um, in this type of stage, in the early stage, I like to use it mostly because that's where the realistic and the depth comes in. Now, as you can see right now, how I did the face, I'm really, really going super light on the face, but I'm, u but I'm using the blending stop more as a pencil and I'm touching up on the dark areas. Also, this is another tip that I'm using too. Now, right now, as you can see, that was a makeup sponge. A makeup sponge is very, very, very useful, especially with since the material it is. Now, I notice you don't want to use it all the time. I only use it when I want to make something very, very, very light. When it comes down to um, a brush, a blending stomp, and a sponge, you don't want to use them all at the same time because each one is used very, very differently. So it all depends on what you're working on. Now, what I'm doing right now is going back and forth with the layers. Since this is the beginning, um, everything in the beginning is very light. So I'm going back and forth with um, the light charcoal pencil and with the blending stock and the brush and the sponge. Now, to me, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not going for super, super dark but I'm just touching up on the dark areas so I know the basics. So as you can see right now, I'm just going pretty much back and forth with the layers. Now I'm working on her arms. Now when it comes down to things like this because of the material, because I don't know how to say it, but it's kind of like she has stockings on her sleeves. So when it comes down to things like this, you always want to touch on the shading 
of the skin tone before you do the materials, if that makes sense. I know when you see the, the outcome of this, you know why I did this and uh, it makes more sense. But as you can see right now, I'm constantly going back and forth. I'm doing the same thing because um, right now what I'm doing is just layers. You constantly want to go back and forth and just create layers. So that's all I'm doing right now, as you can see. Now, one thing I do want to mention, especially um, when it comes down to the face and the features, as you can see, the way I was using the blending stomp, I was always curving everything. Um, now, there is a material that you could use. It's kind of like a paper, just rolled it up into a, a arrow. Um, when it comes down to things like that, I, I like to use that when I'm doing a straight line. But when I'm using a blending stock, um, I try not to use a straight line. I'm always curving everything. Now, as you can see right here, I'm starting off with the hair. Now, one thing I do want to mention when it comes down to the hair, the way I like to do the hair is I like to break it down into parts, into sections. Then I like to act like I'm brushing the person's hair. You never want to go in a back and forth rotation because it does um, show on your work. So the way I feel like um, to make hair and to make it realistic, act like you're brushing the person's hair and go with that flow. So as you can see right now, the same way I went with the skin, I'm doing the same way with the hair. Um, I went back and forth, not back and forth, but I meant back and forth with the materials, with the charcoal pencil and with the blending stomp. And as you can see right now with the brush. And I started off with the dark areas. Because her hair is a light, shiny, bright, um, bright hair, you don't wanna do too much. So less is more when it comes down to situations like this. Now, as you can see right now, how everything is super gray and light, I'm using the makeup sponge. Now with the makeup sponge, um, it brightens up everything. So that's something you never want to use at the end. Now, since this is a stage, now I'm using the charcoal powder. 
once I feel like I'm super, super comfortable with the beginning, um, that's when I use the charcoal powder to darken up everything. So um, looking at the reference, as you can see right now, she's wearing the NWO picture um, t-shirt. It's a dark, dark, dark t-shirt. So right now everything is kind of like pitch black dark. I love using the charcoal powder. Um, it's one of my favorite, favorite materials that I love to use. Now, when it comes down to things like this, I like to use the charcoal powder kind of like um, when I'm kind of going medium because when it comes down to charcoal, I like to go by stages, light, medium, and dark. So when I'm using the charcoal, um, I go, I, I use it when I'm doing like my medium stage. And as you can see, the more you use, the darker it gets. So I like to use um, the brush more as a pencil than a blending stomp when it comes to the charcoal powder, of course. And um, as you can see right now, I'm just um, darkening up on all of the dark, dark, dark areas. And it's just getting more darker. And um, depending on how big the area is, I had to use a different um, brush. As you can see right now, I have two different brushes. One is more wider and the other one is more thin. So when it comes down to certain areas, it's more easier for me to, you know, um go um to shade one thing too i do want to mention i never go back and forth i always go with a circle in formation now right now as you can see i'm using the charcoal um brick now, um, <clears throat> when it comes down to charcoal, it comes in many, many different um, forms. So I always use all the different forms. I like to use the brick. It's more easier for me to get to those dark, 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 dark areas. Um, as you can see, I'm still going back and forth with the charcoal powder, but uh, I still like to use the brick at the same time. Now, as you can see, um, one thing I like to use um, the blending stop. When it comes down to certain mistakes, it was more easier for me to clear with the blending stop because it made certain areas um, bright and light. So it's easier for me to erase. Now, as you can see right now, I had to go with the shirt. Now, since she's wearing a black shirt, you could still see wrinkles and you could still make it realistic. Just because she's wearing a dark shirt, you just don't want to make everything black. You still got wrinkles, you still got dents, um, still got details to do. So I'm, as you can see right now, I'm constantly going back and forth with um, the wrinkles on her shirt just to make it so realistic. You always want to go back and forth and just create layers. So that's what I'm constantly doing right now is just creating layers and going back and forth because now I'm using the medium charcoal pencil. So since I'm using the medium charcoal pencil, I'm just darkening up everything more and more. I still got more work to do on this one, but it's almost like I'm just doing the first stage all over again, but just with a medium charcoal pencil this time. All right. So as you can see right now, she got sleeves on her arms. It's like fishing stockings. I forgot how you call it. But as you can see right now, I had to do um, the shading first. Then I had to do um, the details of this material of that she's wearing. So I had to go back and forth just a little bit but I didn't want to um, erase all the lines. Now, 
For you, the viewers, it's probably hard to see, but for me, the person that was drawing it, I made it light enough for me to see so I didn't lose where I was going, if that makes sense. In the ending, you'll see um, what I'm talking about, if that makes more sense to you, if um, I'm confusing you right now. Now, one thing too, I do want to mention, I didn't do this all in one day. Um, I love taking my time. One thing I noticed too, it's always good to take a break, step back, take a picture and um, kind of look at your reference and just see um, what you need to improve from a different eye. Yes, when you look at your art piece in front of you, you can notice it. But when you look at it through your phone, you can see um, it very, very differently. So right now I'm just doing more work on touching up on everything, still doing more layers. Um, right now, this is the part where I kind of like almost erase stuff um, just to make things more nice and neat. And, um, you know, just to make it look pretty. So right now I'm still going back and forth with the shirt. Now, because her shirt is black, like I said, you constantly want to go back and forth with just creating layers and layers and layers and layers. You just don't want to make it all pitch black dark. You got some parts that are shining here and there. Um, so I'm constantly going back and forth. And as you can see right now, I'm still using two different brushes. This is one of my favorite, favorite brushes right here because it gets through the area. Like it almost looks like it doesn't, but it does. Okay, so right now I'm doing the sleeves. So as you can see right now, I start off with the light charcoal pencil, then I went with the dark, I'm not the dark, but with the medium charcoal pencil. And I probably went back and forth with a 9B um, graphic pencil. But this right here, I try to go as dark as I could um, with this one. So I had to go as dark as I could. Now I'm going with the blending stomp and I'm using, it was kind of a little, little difficult for me because um, I had to constantly keep cleaning my blending stomp and I had to constantly keep um, sharpening the graphic um, charcoal pencil because you gotta make it sharp and you don't want it to be um, roundy. If you make it roundy, it really, really, really makes a difference on your artwork. The more sharpened um, it is, the more better your work comes out. Rolling in the 
So now I'm doing more details on the face. Now when it comes down to the face, um, it was a little, little bit more difficult for me because the way she's tilting and leaning and you still want to get more features, but there wasn't that much features to do. So right now, as you can see, this is like one, one of my favorite parts is just working on the details of the skin. So I started off just a little bit on the forehead, but as you can see right now, I'm getting to the part with the erasing part right now. But when it comes down to this part, um, it's constantly like um, having really, really patience when it comes down to this. Um, to me, it's more fun. I love it, especially when it comes down to using um, the charcoal powder and just moving it all out. Now, as you can see, one thing I always do is I'm always going back and forth. I love the charcoal powder. I never want to fall asleep on, especially with this um, piece that I'm doing right now. And you can tell by looking at the reference how everything was all pitch black and dark. Um, so I'm always going back and forth with the charcoal powder. Um, to me, one thing I really like about using it is that um, depending on how you use it, is very very easy not to leave marks
drop and then I pull me up some drops. Y'all said rich me, nigga. Y'all ain't on no block. Your legs closed, cause all I want is I'm gonna pull up and you pull up. Y'all gon' got a cop. Now, as you can see how everything just got darker and darker, I was just going by layers. The more you just spreading everything out, the more it just creates itself. Now, right now for the bottom piece right now, um, I do apologize. The camera's not low enough for you to see, but I am working <clears throat> on some chains. Now, right now, I'm using the black charcoal pencil. So this is the point where I'm just darkening up everything right now, and I feel comfortable of what I have, but I'm still tightening up on certain areas. Now, as you can see right here, I'm playing around with the Kendall eraser just a little bit, just to get to the highlight parts. When it comes down to her cheeks and her chin and the forehead, where it comes down to the shiny, smooth areas, you want to get those highlight areas. That's where you come down where you got to use the eraser.
All right, so right now, this is coming to the finishing parts. Now, the main thing that I'm using right now for this part is the, when it comes down to doing the highlights, is a eraser that's almost like a pencil. It's like a pencil eraser. And it's very, very smooth and nice and neat when it comes down to different situations to use like this. I like to use it for her hair and um, mainly for her hair and the details of the skin, which I'm going to be getting into. But right now I'm just erasing everything, sharpening everything up, highlighting her hair, highlighting her nose and um, certain areas that um, need to be very, very bright and highlighted. Now, right now, as you can see, I'm starting off with the skin and I have to go constantly back and forth, just creating little dots here and there and each sharpened eraser tips on top of it. And I'm going to show you guys so far what I have done and you guys let me know and check me out on Instagram and let me know what you guys think.